everybody. So this is the final review. The Return of the Jedi. The last one before I get to see The Force Awakens. This video will probably be published the day that I'm seeing The Force Awakens, but earlier in the day. Let's get right into it. Let's get into Return of the Jedi, which is actually a very different film from its predecessor, The Empire Strikes Back. Even though you see glimpses of the darkness that was in The Empire Strikes Back, most of this movie is relatively lighter than the previous two films. There are some moments, though, like the death of Yoda, which is a very powerful and well-done scene, very poignant. There's like a couple other moments in this movie, especially toward the end of the film. However, the film starts off on Tatooine in Jabba's palace. Han Solo is here, stuck in carbonite, and then an elaborate plan is set up to rescue him. One of the first things you get from this film is it's not the same Luke in the previous two films. This is a more battle-tested Luke, a more wise Luke, closer to a full-on Jedi than more of a guy with some force powers who has a lot of potential. He is more fully fleshed out as a Jedi in this film, and it really reflects in Mark Hamill's performance. This is probably his strongest performance of the three films, even though he is good in all of them, and he actually has a very tough role in all three of them, so he did a great job here, even though he actually does have more to play off of. As an Empire, he was going up against a lot of puppets and green screen, while here he actually gets to interact with the actors more, so it really works out. I think the rescue is well done, and the scene in the Sarlacc pit, for the most part, is really exciting and a lot of fun. The actual like plan when he flips over the board and has his lightsaber is awesome. The only moment that really bothers me in this is the way Boba Fett goes out. Obviously this is a common criticism of the movie, but Boba Fett was a really cool character. I'm not as in love with him as other people are, but he was cool enough where he didn't deserve the death he got, even though it was sort of like, uh, and then they kind of pass it on, so it's not a huge deal. But it is a little distracting, but other than that, this scene is great. But then we get into the meat of the movie. The Rebel Alliance is planning to take down the Empire once and for all. The Empire has created another Death Star, but it is not fully operational yet. And the Rebel Alliance sees this as the time to attack. And they have to go down to the planet of Endor to take out the generator so they can get into the Death Star and destroy it. And we get some great suspense as they go down onto this planet. We don't really know if the code is going to clear, and Darth Vader is feeling out Luke. Is Luke going to be there? Is Luke on this ship? And Luke knows he's endangered the mission by coming. And this is a really well done scene. And Vader lets them go through, so then they can plan a trap for them. One section of this plotline that has held up very well is the speeder bike chase. That is still intense as hell and very well shot, well edited. You really feel the tension here and the way it ends is just exciting. It's a really great and wonderful scene and probably one of the best action scenes in the entire original trilogy which is saying a lot. But at this point you have to talk about the Ewoks and yeah they're not great. For me, they're not a deal breaker, but they really do take away from the drama of some of these scenes, especially in the middle of the film, when they go to the Ewok village and nothing is happening. These scenes are really not essential to the film and really could have at least been shortened if not cut out entirely. The Ewoks really don't even need to be in this film. It's a little implausible when they're taking out stormtroopers by kind of hitting them with a rock. It doesn't really feel real and like I said contributes to the more lighthearted tone of this film that contrasts with the Luke scene or the Luke plot line with Darth Vader which is incredibly serious and emotional and well done. The battle on Endor is in general a decent well shot scene even though some of the way the Ewoks are fighting is a little bit ridiculous like I mentioned before but there are some really great moments in this like Leia and Han's back and forth, like, I love you, I know, but reversed. That was great. Some of the R2 and C3PO stuff is fun. 
But overall, the scene just doesn't feel as natural as some of the other scenes. It feels a tiny bit forced, but it doesn't really take away too much from the film. I think it's still pretty much enjoyable, because we have this other amazing section with Darth Vader, Palpatine, and Luke. But let's get into this fight between Darth Vader, Palpatine, and Luke. And really, it's more to the fight. It's really just an inner conflict, and Luke, will he turn to the dark side? Will he stay on the light side? And actually, the same conflict was within Darth Vader, Anakin Skywalker. Luke is trying to convince him, you still have a good within you. I know it. And Darth Vader keeps insisting, that was taken from me a long time ago. I'm truly evil. And Palpatine, or in this case, the Emperor, is really trying to get Luke to turn to the dark side. Telling him to let go of the light side. Just give in to his anger and his hatred. For a while, Luke really is able to fight this off. He doesn't want to fight Vader. He's trying his hardest not to. But soon, Vader brings down the bombshell. He mentions Leia. Because later, earlier in the film, we figured out that Leia is Luke's sister and that she still has the Force within her. It's just not as prevalent as it is in Luke. So Vader realizes this and tries to prey upon that. And this is when Luke snaps. And he goes right at Vader, using his aggression. And unlike the prequels, there's no finesse here. This is pure rage. Which is supposedly what Anakin had in Episode 3, but is still dancing around like a ballerina while he fights. Here, Luke is just pissed off and going at it, and soon cuts Vader's hands off. And he realizes that this is the same thing Vader had done to him not too long ago, and Luke is able to snap out of it, and realizes that he is going down the path he swore to not go down, and is able to resist and not kill Vader. And then the Emperor uses Force Lightning as hard as electrifying Luke, and Darth Vader has to make a decision. Is he going to save Luke or stick with the dark side? And as he now famously has, he fulfills the prophecy, or whatever bullshit the prequel set up, and defeats em the Emperor. He picks him up and throws him down some shaft thing where a blue fog comes up. I don't really get that, but you know. Whatever. The worst part about this scene is that, in general, it's incredibly dramatic, very well shot, but then Lucas had to go back and tamper with it and add this no, no, to Vader's dialogue, which is bullshit, because in the original, he didn't say anything. He just did it, it was wordless, but you understood his thought process all the way through. But I don't think it's really that bad. I haven't really talked about the altercations, because I really don't want to. They're depressing to talk about. The only time it didn't really cause anything horrific was Empire. But this whole section is incredibly well done, and really the saving grace of the film. Because the space stuff is good, it's fine, it's just kind of like the C plot. The Endor stuff is a little lighthearted and ridiculous, but fun. And this is the part where the drama really comes in. And while the tones don't really mesh well together, I think it comes out okay. So yes. This is not as impactful or well done as the first two movies, but I still think this is a very solid final film in a trilogy. This is no Godfather Part 3. This is still a great movie in my opinion. I think overall, it comes out as the winner. I don't think that the light, more lighthearted tone, contrasting with the dark scenes, really hurt it that much. So I'm going to give it an A-. Of course, I want to hear from you all. What do you think of Return of the Jedi? Comment below, and so you can subscribe down there, because guess what? I'm seeing The Force Awakens tonight, and there will be a review. It is finally here. The Force Awakens is upon us. Are you ready? Because I am. I have seen the trailer 60 times, so you know I'm excited for this. See you all later with that Force Awakens review.